Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity and this one is for freshers and college students. So if you don't know by now, Microsoft is hiring for software engineers role and they are hiring for freshers and in parallel they are hiring for software engineering intern as well. So this is a great opportunity for anyone who's a fresher right now or is a college student looking for an internship or a full-time job as SDE1. This is a great opportunity for you because of course Microsoft is the dream company of pretty much everyone. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the opening, we'll be discussing about the requirements, the eligibility, and we'll be talking about how you can get your resume shortlisted. Because let me be very clear, the interviews of Microsoft are not that difficult, but getting shortlisted in Microsoft is pretty much a very difficult thing to do. So we're gonna be talking about how you can get your resume shortlisted. So let's get into it. And just a quick reminder that I make a lot of videos about off-campus hiring. If you see my channel for the past week, Almost every day I've made a video about a company that is hiring off campus for college students and for freshers. So if you're a fresher or a college student, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of the opening that are out there. All right. So coming back to the openings at hand, the links to apply are in the description box, but make sure that you watch the entire video before applying so that you have the best chance at clearing the shortlisting round and so that your resume doesn't get rejected in the first round itself. So like I said, it is for intern and it is for fresher as well for SD1 position. Now for interns, it's fine. You can apply directly with the changes in the resume that I'm going to tell you. But for the fresher role, for the SD1 role, I highly suggest getting a referral. Because in intern, it may not matter as much, but having a referral for the SD1 position will help you a lot. So if you know someone in Microsoft, then you can ask for a referral. Even if you don't know anyone in Microsoft, you can message people on LinkedIn. Let me tell you how it is done, right? Because a lot of people are confused about how to ask for referral. First thing you need to do is make sure that your resume is uploaded to your drive, make it public, get the link from the drive and put the link in your LinkedIn message. So just find an employee on Microsoft on LinkedIn and don't go after an employee who have too many connections or who have too many followers, because of course they will not be seeing your message. If you find an employee who has less connection, who has less followers and is active, then that is your best bet because they will be easier to talk to and they will most probably reply to your message. But it is a numbers game. So you can message as many people as you can asking for referral. Now, how do you ask for referral? Don't say hi, hello, nothing. In one message, just say hi and a couple of lines about your introduction and something good about yourself. So if you're good in problem solving, mention that. If you have some good projects, mention that. If you have achieved anything in hackathons and open source, whatever is the best thing about you, mention that in the couple of lines about your introduction and then send a link to your resume, the drive link and send the job ID. Do not forget to send the job ID and in this message, just send it to them and most probably you'll get a reply. But even if you don't get a reply, you can ask other people because getting a referral is numbers game. The more people you message, the more chance of you getting a reply back is now. Once you have a referral ready, you can apply to the fresher role. Even without referral, you can apply, of course, but having a referral is going to help you a bit more. It is going to give you a bit more of advantage because like I said, having a resume shortlisted for Microsoft off campus is a bit difficult. The interviews are easier than getting shortlisted. Okay. So now how do you prepare your resume? What are the things you need to do in your resume or prepare in your resume so that you have the best chance at getting it shortlisted? So. There's only two, three things that matters for Microsoft. The first thing is projects. You need to have very high quality projects in your resume. We'll talk about this in detail. Second thing is your problem solving credentials. So if you have some good coding profile that will give you an edge in your resume, we'll again talk about this in detail. And the third thing is any extra thing that you have, any extra thing that you have in the sense, if you have hackathons, if you have done open source, if you have done any internship, whatever it is, any sort of X factor that you have, that is the third thing. So these three things, if you have in your resume, definitely that will attract the recruiter and definitely that will help your resume getting shortlisted. And of course, apart from these three things, you need to have a good ATS score. You need to have a good template. Those things, of course, you already know. So focus on these things as well. Do not neglect the ATS score. You need to have a good ATS score and a good template. Now going one by one, the first thing that I said are the projects. So make sure that you have some good full stack projects in your resume. If you don't have a full stack project, a front end or a back end project is also fine, but full stack projects are pretty much the best thing. If you have AI integrated in your project, that will also give you an edge. And of course, give a link to your GitHub, give a link to your deployed project. This is very important. So having high quality projects will definitely, definitely help you. 
it can even help you in getting a referral right because the person will see your resume see you have some good projects and they'll be more willing to give you a referral now the next thing you need to have in your resume is a good coding profile so you must have a lead code profile of course and if you've solved good amount of problems mention that in the resume give a link to your lead code in the resume and on any other coding platform code forces coach if you have a good rating let's say you're an expert on code forces if you're even a specialist on code forces you're four stars on code chef if you have a good rating on lead code you're a night guardian on lead code mention that in your resume okay because here in microsoft your problem solving skills matters a lot okay so if you have good coding profiles please mention that in your resume and at least you should have your lead code in your resume okay give a link to your lead code in your resume if you have solved a good amount of problems you can mention that in your resume apart from that of course like i said you need to have some sort of x factor so if you've gotten a very good rating or very good ranking in a contest if you've gotten top 3 in a hackathon if you've contributed very good on open source or if you've done internship in a good startup any sort of thing that you feel is good about you put that in the resume having all of these three things in your resume along with a referral will definitely help you in getting shortlisted into microsoft and once you get shortlisted the next thing that you'll have to come across are obviously going to be the interviews now i have made some interview experiences about microsoft i'll give a link to those in the description box apart from that i'll give some other interview experiences related to microsoft in the description box as well so make sure that you go through the description box it will help you understand the interview process more but in general the interviews at microsoft are going to focus on your problem solving that is going to be probably the most primary thing in the interview so you will be asked to do dsa problem in the interview right and the amount or the type of dsa problem is not going to be too difficult it will only be a standard problem or a slight variation they will not be asking you too much of a difficult dsa problem it will be around medium medium hard and that to a standard problem so make sure that you practice well on lead code and the three most important topics i would say for microsoft are graph tree and dynamic programming these are three very important more and more on graph and tree i've seen a lot of questions that microsoft has asked have been on trees so tree graph and dynamic programming these three are very important of course apart from that you have array strings and these other topics but these three are very important especially trees you need to focus on trees i've seen a lot of microsoft interview experiences where they ask problem on trees right apart from that i'll give some microsoft tag problems in the description box make sure that you solve them as well and if you haven't already do striver sheet it will help you a lot in other interviews as well and it has some really good problems that you have a good chance of seeing in the interview so this is it for dsa and for all the other things you will find interview experiences in the description box so you'll know how the interview process is going to be like and you can prepare accordingly resources will also be in the description box and apart from that of course the most important part is getting your resume shortlisted and we've discussed quite well about that so if you have any other doubts apart from all of this then please let me know in the comments i'll be there to answer to whatever doubts you have and make sure that you apply with a good resume with a good referral and surely you will be able to get shortlisted but even if you don't do not worry you'll be seeing a lot more opportunities i'll be bringing a lot more off campus opportunities on this channel so just stay tuned keep preparing and watch out for more videos